welcome back to Joe Tech TV. Today we want to talk a little bit more about the C8 Corvette and specifically Cess C8 Corvette behind us. From the factory, these things actually are pretty quick already, but here at Joe Tech Motorsports, we say nay, not fast enough. Tell me, my guy, we haven't seen this thing on the channel for a little while now. We kind of kept a curtain over it to do some things. I mean, tell me, where, where are we at right now? What's coming next? So right after Rocky Mountain Race Week, there was obviously a lot of potential with the car. We decided we were going to try to go for a first eights. To do that, we decided we'll build the engine. We went through the engine, checked everything. Everything looked really great in the motor. This motor can handle a thousand horsepower. We've proven it. But... We want to make more power than that. We were going for eights. We want to be the first eights. Unfortunately, we did not make it to eights. Uh, Anderson Dick of Fuel Tech was able to make it to eights first. Congratulations. That was a really tough thing to do. We know it for sure. We tried. Many others have tried. Congratulations yeah. on it. No one can take that. First eights. Congratulations. But we tried. Uh... Car broke. Car broke. Big sad. <laughs> <laughs> So through Rocky Mountain Race Week, we had uh, you know stock internals, but we did have the ETS turbo kit on there. Big shout out to ETS, you guys are doing great things. Love partnering up with you guys on this particular project, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. So during Rocky Mountain Race Week, we learned a lot about this car and a lot of what it's really capable of. And the first thing we figured out is that the motor that comes in this from the factory is already pretty beefy as far as the internals are concerned. Now we accidentally ran a nine second run in Oklahoma when we were in the 10 second bracket, kind of figuring out that, you know, maybe we could push it a little bit further. So we kind of took it easy for the rest of the week, but then at the end of the week, after we turned in our last time slip for this car, decided to push it a little bit further. Uh, you know, what are some of the changes that we made on that last day to push it into that nine four? So on the, the last day, decided to turn up the boost a little bit, see what it could do. Um, we did the 949, which was great. It's stock internals. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little bit worried at first, after we took the motor apart to in, to inspect it before the motor build, everything looked really good. I think I think these cars are definitely capable of eights on a stock engine. Our main limitation is basically the computer and our clutch, obviously. Um, in the future, someone's going to do eights on a stock engine. Hopefully, it's us. Kind of out of the question as far as our current setup, because we did, after Rocky Mountain, go ahead and build the motor in pursuit of that first eight-second pass in a C8. So... You know, obviously now we have a we have a built motor. We have pistons, rods, valve train. We forgot so, to check the tire so pressure. Seth, tire you pressure. just ran a nine point three at one hundred and fifty five. How do you feel, sir? Not fast enough. Not fast enough. Not <laughs> fast enough. <laughs> I like this guy. The the rush for eights is no longer there now that Anderson has that that crown. We you know we might consider to put another stock engine back in here, see how far we can push it. You know we always like to find out the limits on our own cars before we offer it to customers. You know we don't want to tell customers, hey, you can do nines all day on your motor and and it doesn't <laughs> yeah. do it. You know and that's what we've been doing a lot with this car since since we stopped racing it is. We've been doing a lot of development, carbon products, wheel products, brakes. We've been testing it on this car. We don't like to sell parts that we haven't tested. So almost everything we sell for these cars is either on this car or has been tested on this car. That's what I appreciate about Seth. He will go through the heartache of figuring out what works on this thing so you don't have to. Since Rocky Mountain, it did kind of drum up some interest in our own personal community right here. And I think we've done another four or five turbo kits on C8s for some customers. I think we're on our fifth one and we have another five pretty much lined up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. everybody's lining up like hotcakes to get on these things. And for a good reason, I think kind of what we saw with the GTR platform, which is, you know, kind of been our bread and butter for a while here at Joe Tech, uh, is a GTR platform for a lot of reasons. I think what we're seeing with the interest on the C8 this is probably, I mean, I might not be making too bold of a statement here to say, it's probably the new GTR. Wait, shut your mouth. Shut, shut, your, shut your mouth. Would you agree with that? Yeah, the, you know, what made the GTR so great when it came out was its potential for its cost. You know, obviously it's a car that can, you know, hang with the big boys, you know, Porsches, McLarens, at a fraction of the cost. And this car is the same thing. It's, it's a relatively cheap car for what you are getting. It is an amazing car. It's a bargain. 
And as long as you can find one without the thirty thousand dollar markup that we're seeing from a lot of people, right now it's a little rough. Um, yeah, it's but, weird. You know, um, once once the market kind of calms down, these cars are just terrific value. You're you're not going to get a better car either road course or in drag racing. And what we're seeing is with relatively little modifications, these cars can be extremely fast. Yeah. And I think that even with the markup right now at $100,000, there's not a whole lot that can touch it. I mean, you've got a dual clutch transmission, you have the engine sitting in the proper place now. And for that price point, I don't think you can really get anything out of the box that's quite like this right now. No, I mean, the, the car is easily competing with cars more than double its, its value. Yeah, and beating it in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, out of the box, uh, 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. That's killer. Now, one of the things that we found was the 60 to 130 kind of leaves a little bit uh, to, to still be wanting on it. Actually, Kenny was definitely not impressed with the 60 to 130. Oh, this thing is so amazing. Yeah, stock, <laughs> stock it. You know, the, the car really, GM designed this car as a road course car. I went to Spring Mountain. The, they offer a driver's course for the C8s. They're, they're very impressive around the track. And keep in mind, this is the Stingray. This is not the Z06. This is not the mm -hmm. ZR1. This is not the Zora. And the Stingray is, is already an amazing car. Looked like you had a lot of fun out there this last weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, I definitely recommend Spring Mountain for any new C8 owner. It's, it's worth every dollar. Link in the description below if you guys want to sign up for that right now. So I think most of our consumers here aren't going to go immediately for the Stage 6 like we have here in Seth's car, uh, but they're kind of gravitating more towards that Stage 3, Stage 4, right? The Stage 3, Stage 4 is the best bang for the buck. It, it's going to be a completely different car, basically, and for not a lot of money. The Stage 5, Stage 6, you know, you're, you're starting to get pretty aggressively powerful car. It's going to be more of a straight line car once you start getting to that point. The Stage 3, Stage 4, you can definitely still track the car. You know, you can do almost, it's a, it'll be a well-rounded car. Once you get to five and six, you're starting to make over a thousand horsepower. It's staying, starting to get kind of a... Yeah, you got to kind of know yeah. what you're getting into with, yeah. with something like that. But I think for a lot of the folks that are going for that level of power, they're coming out of cars like, you know, these high horsepower GTRs, uh, these high horsepower other vehicles that are like mm -hmm. that. You kind of you kind of know what to expect. Now, one of the biggest questions that we have with this particular turbo kit, as you can see, it sits pretty low underneath the back end of the car right there. And you can see the air cones out of the back. Question that we get all the time is, hey, can you drive this in the rain? Uh, is it gonna get dirty? You can have some problems there. Now, we had a chance to test that out pretty good with the Rocky Mountain Race Series that we did. I think one of the days we were driving in some pretty thick rain and uh, part of the course they took us through was this really nasty dirt road. Uh, it was like maybe a couple of miles, just this nasty dirt and just coated absolutely coated the air filters uh, with dirt and you still raced an entire day with those cones dirty, still running tens. And I don't even think we noticed really a big difference going down the track with that, did we? So the, the air filters are sized considerably larger than what the output of the turbos are. So with that, even though they're a little bit dirty, you're not gonna see a massive drop in power. There was no difference in my quarter mile time from when it was clean versus when it was dirty. And they were they were significantly they were filthy. Disgusting. Um, we drove in the rain. I, I saw no issues. The way the filter is located, unless you're going through standing pretty tall water, you're not gonna have any issues just driving through rain. Our Houston viewers, yeah. maybe that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about, the air intakes, from the factory in this car are in the scoops. So if you go through a big dusty road, your stock filter is gonna get dusty as well. So it's it's really not really that much of a difference. The only thing I would say negative is going through like eight to 10 inches of standing water. Pop the filters off, you can clean them, put them back on. It's not a consumable product like that. Uh, you just clean them and get right back to work on them. Obviously what we did with Rocky Mountain Race Week, I was impressed with the car. Uh, you were probably the most comfortable racer that week, oh, <laughs> by far. By far. Bose performance system, had your AC going. Uh, how do you think you changed the oil that week, did you? No, I didn't change the oil once that week. Yeah, like most of the guys are changing the oil every single day. This thing was just put gas in it and go. It was it was, it was was almost like cheating compared to everyone else. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I'm curious about, and we haven't been on the track since the clutch started to go. Let's talk more about that, man. So uh, the clutch that we had in there, which one was that for Rocky Mountain? It's the same clutch we've had in there for a while. The prototype from ETS is the stage three clutch. It will be available to consumers soon. We've been doing a lot of testing for it. We've obviously found the limits of the clutch. 1200 seems to be fine. I tried to run a 15 through it, not fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> everything's gonna have its limits. Everything will have its limits. And I think for uh, most of the customers that are gonna come out that want that, you know, maybe thousand horsepower, or whatever, uh, this clutch does seem to be really good for, for that setup. 
But for us, though, what I'm curious about, man, we have, you know, we're kind of in our off season right now. It's winter. I think most of the tracks around us are kind of either closed or about to be closed uh, for the winter season. So we're working on maybe potentially being able to have this thing hold some more power. I mean, what do we have in the works there? We're working on a new clutch right now. Um, hopefully, I would say probably January, February, we get up and going. We plan to bring the, the car back out um, during Texas 2K. And hopefully we'll do our eight then. And then I think we're going to be bringing like what, eight or nine cars to 2K coming up? That's what we have scheduled. Usually it gets up to like 15 to 20 on average. Yeah, you get some FOMO yeah. once you see the, the list coming down in the yeah. group chat. Yeah, it happens. So one of the things that I want to make sure I do say is that there's quite a few of us looking to push this platform right now. And it does take the community to push it all the way through. If we didn't have any healthy competition, it probably wouldn't be moving as fast as it currently is. So again, big shout out to Anderson over at Fuel Tech for being the first one in the eights. Uh, but a friendly heads up, we're, we're coming to take that spot from you. Yes, we are. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, guys. We will have more on this car, more on the other cars that we're working on right now. Uh, again, we're a little bit on the off season right now for racing. We might maybe put together a private track event here soon for some of the guys and get some of the action out there. But uh, until then, be sure you like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell. So whenever we do get this thing back out on the track, you guys will be the first ones to know. What's up, gamer girls? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash that mother bell.